Christ, we give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who is head of our life. We do have so much to be grateful and thankful for, for his grace and for his mercy, how he loved us when we were the lovable. It was him that died for the sin of the whole entire world. And he let us to know if a man, woman, boy, or girl die and be lost, it's nobody's fault but their own. Why? Because he have already paid the sin debt for the whole entire world. He did it because of one word, love. The Bible tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So everlasting life is open up to all mankind. Man's job is to accept the offer. What is he offering? He is offering eternal and everlasting life. Who is he offering it to? Everybody. Amen. And if one is lost, he lost because of his own unbelief. He cannot fault dad, mom, sister, and brother. Nobody but himself because Jesus have already paid the sin debt for the entire world and we just give him all the honor and the praise loving us when we were the lovable. First of all let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Our Father, our Father in heaven again as we come before you we come humble we know us how first of all we come just they say thank you for we thank you for all things. You have told your children all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we can truly say we love him. We love him because he first loved us. Now Lord ask them that give me the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding I need that I may be able to bring forth the word that will be pleasing in God's sight. Because it ain't about me, it isn't about you, but it's about him. He the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, just bless, and we know we shall be blessed, touch us. And we know we shall be touched, and we're going to give you all the honor and the praise. For it in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Let us go to the book of First Corinthians. The 15th chapter, first through the 8th verse. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 51st through the 58th verses. And I was subject, I was subject to, to the day is, there is hope, amen, there is hope beyond the grave. To everyone that believe. Amen. The only way you miss it is unbelief. You have to believe that he is, that he is a reward of the dole that diligently seek him. He let us to know, seek and you shall find. Knock at the door and it shall be open unto us. Amen. Everyone that believed the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it not God will that any would perish. Amen. Because the work have been already done. Who did the work? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He did it all for all mankind. And I count that nothing but love. Amen. He loved us when we were the lovable. Open the doors up for us that it not his will that any would perish. Amen. This ain't nothing but one thing. Love. Amen. He loved us when we were the lovable. It won't about us. It was about him. 
Amen. It's about a loving son who died for the sin of the whole entire world. Amen. Our subject, again, their hope beyond the grave to everyone that believe. Amen. Not for everybody. Oh, I hope we see this. Not for everybody, but everyone believe. Amen. What Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He did it all right by himself. Amen. Let's go to the book. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and the first verse. And we're going on down to the eighth verse. And then, sister and brother, we're going again, First uh, Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 51st verse through the 59th verse. Amen. There are no hope beyond the grave to everyone, amen, that believe. When we believe in the finished work, he said, I give you eternal life. And sisters and brothers, we finna read things concerning to the way that he may give us this eternal life. By confessing with the mouth and believing in the heart that it will God raise Jesus from the dead. He said, I give you eternal life. Amen. The 15th chapter, 1 Corinthians, and the first verse. Paul began to write, Moreover, brethren. Maybe I need to pause here. He ain't talking about that group that will not believe. He talking about that group that believe in the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Amen, sister and brother. Without the gospel, there are no hope for nobody. But Jesus brought forth the gospel. Amen, that we might have eternal and everlasting life. He went on and said, which I preached unto you. Paul used a singular word here. Amen, not us. That means he didn't include the quail. Amen, this message was given only to Apostle Paul for the age of the church. He said, I preached unto you which also ye have received. That means when one have accept Jesus Christ, amen, this gospel, and he have made Jesus their choice. Amen. And wherein you stand. He talking about those who have accept Jesus, death, burial, in his resurrection. That's where our hope lies. Let's look at this second verse here. Amen. By which also you are saved, if ye keep in memories. Amen. That I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it the Jesus way. Amen. Our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Amen. Amen. We're going to get it. We're going to get it his way. And we move on down to this third verse here. For I delivered into you first. I hope we see this, sisters and brothers. The quail didn't deliver this first. Paul said, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sin according to the scriptures. Amen. And we're going to get it. We're going to get it God's way. 
God have a plan, and it not God's will that any would perish. Amen. He loved us when we were not lovable. The Bible tells us if we move on down to this fourth verse here, our sister and brothers, uh, and that he was buried. Who is he that was buried? Jesus. Talking about Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that he rose again the third day. Talking about Jesus didn't only die, but he rose, amen, on the third day. And that that also according to the scriptures. Amen. The fifth verse, as we move on down, sister and brother. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the quail. Now he's talking about that group that followed Jesus in his earthly ministry. Amen. Uh, Paul didn't follow Jesus in his earthly ministry. He followed Jesus, amen, after Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. I hope we can recognize that fact. Amen. Let's move on down to this sick verse here. After that he was seen, amen, of uh, above four, uh, 500 brethren at once. Amen. This is talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, of whom the greater part remain into this present Amen. Talking about this brother time at that particular time. And, but some have fell asleep. That means at this particular time, some of the old people who had made Jesus their choice had died along the wayside. The Bible tells us, as we move on down to this seventh verse, after that, he was seen of James, amen, and then all, all certain brothers of the others, amen, seen of all the other apostles, those, amen, those apostles who had followed Jesus when? In their earth, in his earthly ministry. You got to put it in the right place. Amen. To get the truth, sisters and brothers. And we look at this eighth verse. And last of all, he was seen of me. Amen. He has seen Paul. Amen. At the end of, of the, the church time. And at the end, amen, he was seen of me also as the one born out of due time. Amen. Paul is talking about himself. For I am the least among the apostles. He never exalted himself. Amen, sisters and brothers. Whatever God have ordained you to do, don't exalt yourself. Amen. You ain't got to get too far down the road exalting self. You got to give him all the credit. He the author and the finisher of, of our faith. The Bible said, Amen, that and not me to be called an apostle. And sister, he said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. Why, Paul? Because I persecuted the church of God. He recognized that now, but when he was persecuting the church, he didn't know what he was doing. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, this 10th verse here, but by grace of God, I am what I am. 
and his grace which were bestowed upon me were not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than them all. Amen. His message was not the message of the quail that followed Jesus in his earthly ministry. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was given me. This grace wasn't given to the quail. This grace was given to Apostle Paul. For what age and what time? The church, the body of Christ. Amen. The eleventh verse. Uh, Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. That's the only way you can make it. By believing in the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to the scripture, sisters and brothers, for this age, the age of the church will be called the body of Christ. I think i get one more verse here. Amen. Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead. How says some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? When a man don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus' death, burial, and the resurrection, there's no hope. Amen. Amen. He has to believe. Amen. That God work what he has wrought the only way of uh, us opening up things for those who will believe the finished work. And then not God will that any would perish. If a man perish, he will perish. Why? Because of his own unbelief. Can't fault dad. Can't fault mom, sister, and brother, and no other man. Amen. You got to have faith in the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when we can believe it, sisters and brothers, he said, I give you eternal life. And he said, when I give it to you, guess what? He said, you will never perish. Amen, sisters and brothers. The way is already prepared. He prepared the way 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross of Calvary, hung his head in the lock of his shoulder and said, it is finished. Amen. Amen. He did it. Amen. Uh, because of one word, and that word is love. God so. Love the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall never believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is given to every man that believe. Amen. The finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and accept him for their personal Savior. Amen. That's the only way you can believe. Sister and brother, you got to believe in the finished work of Jesus. Let's move on down here now and look at this mystery that God had hid from the foundation of the world. Amen. In the four gospel books, amen, this mystery wasn't given. In the Old Testament scripture, this mystery, mystery was not given. I'm finna talk about this mystery because this mystery had something to do with the church, the body of Christ. Amen. The 51st verse, it reads like this. Behold, I show you a mystery. Amen. This containing the church. Amen. Talking about the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. He said, we. Talking about the believer now, those who have accepted him for his personal Savior. We shall not all sleep, mm -hmm. but we shall all be changed. Amen. To talk about those who would accept Jesus Christ for their personal Savior. 
Amen. He went on to begin to continue. Amen. This message, sister and brother, the 52nd verse. Amen. In the moment. Amen. In the quinkling of an eye. Amen. At the last trump. Amen. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Amen. And we shall be saved. We all shall be saved who have believed in the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going down to this 53rd verse here for this corruptible must put on incorruption. Amen. And this martyr, talking about this martyr body, sister and brother, that we tack a nickel in now. Amen. Must put on immortality. Amen. Talking about those who have made Jesus their choice. Amen. The Bible tell us as we move on down to this 54th verse, well, so when this corruptible, amen, talking about this dead body now, <laughs> this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this martyr, amen, they're going to make the, the martyr going to come alive shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, Amen, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We have the victory even now, sisters and brothers. If you are saved, ain't but one play for you. Amen. Amen, you're on your way to glory, but even if you isn't saved and die in that state, you ain't got but one place. And that one place is hell. Amen. I don't want to go there. Matter of fact, I ain't going because I know whom I believe. And I know he is able to amen, do what needs to be done when I believe in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is able to do what no other power can do. The Bible tells us as we move on down to the 51st, 55. Amen. Verse, sisters and brothers, oh, death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Death don't have no control over one who has said yes to Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, how you know, Atkins? Oh, death, where is thou sting? O oh, grave, where is thou victory? Amen. The victory and death don't have no, amen, power over the one who have made Jesus their choice. Amen. We ought to tell him thank you. Thank you. He has already did the work. The work was done 2,000 years ago. And our job is to accept the offer. Mm -hmm. And who is he offering to? He's offering to everybody. Amen. But you have to accept what he is offering. What is he offering? He is offering eternal and everlasting life. Who is he offering it to? Everybody. But everybody won't accept it. Amen. Right why they won't accept it. Amen. Because of unbelief you got he got to believe we have to believe in the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he said I will give you eternal life he said when I give it to you you will never perish amen he's the author and the finish of our faith and you can put all your faith in him amen 100 percent you can put faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 57th verse. 
Amen. But thank be to God, mm -hmm. which give us the victory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who is this us he's talking to? Everyone that believe in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. It come only through, amen, the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, our job is just to accept the offer. Who is he offering it to? Everybody. How you know, Atkin? It not God will that any would perish. Man perish because of one word, unbelief. Leaf, you have to believe that he is, that he is a reward of the dole that diligently seek him. You seek and you shall find. Knock at the door and it shall be open unto you. God have a plan, and God's plan alone will work. Amen. Every going down to the 57th verse, but thank be to God. Amen, which give us the victory. We have the victory now, sister and brother, if we believe. Amen, we have the victory. Amen, how we receive this victory? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way and the only way you can get it. You can't get it no other way, sister and brother. Amen. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it the Jesus way. Amen. He have already did the work. The Bible tells us, every move on down to the 58th verse, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, Amen. Maybe I need, need to pause here. Mm -hmm. Beloved brethren. Talking about those who love Jesus Christ who have accepted him for their personal savior, he tell us what we become and what we have to do now. Amen. Be ye stood face, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain, sister and brother, because you have accepted Jesus Christ for your personal Savior. And what did the Lord do? The man called, he called Apostle Paul to come, amen, and bring forth this new order for the age of the church, for the body of Christ. And this man brought this message and every man who believe in the finished work, amen, can be saved. Amen. Is there anything else? Is there anything else that he has to do? I tell you, no. Ain't nothing else to do, sister and brothers. He have already done it. Our job is believe the finished work. Amen. He did it. Amen. And he did it right by himself. Amen. God sent him down to die for the sin of the whole entire world. Then God fixed it so the Holy Ghost would take his aboard in us that we may learn of him, that we may have an understanding of God's word. You ain't going to get it, amen, natural. How you know that, Atkin? The natural man knows not the things of God. Neither can they know them because they are spiritual discerned. If you're going to get it, you got to get it God's way. Amen. God has a plan. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And as I first stated, 
it not with his will that any would perish. Man perish because he won't accept what he is offering. Amen. Amen. And he had already planned this plan before the foundation of the world. Amen. When Adam had the forbidden fruit, then Adam lost it all. When Jesus come, amen, he gained it all back. Amen. When one believed in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to examine somebody. We need to examine ourselves and make sure and very sure that you have made Jesus your choice. And then he said, what I do, I give you eternal life. He said, when I give it to you, you will never perish. Amen. He already, amen, done did the work. Our job is to accept it. If you accept it, he said, you will never perish. God bless you. God bless you. Don't clock on the wall. Don't clock on the wall. And then that can know time for me to get out of here. But as you enjoy this radio program, will you write me a letter sometime? Walter Atkins Jr., Post Office Box 1142, Tarbon, North Carolina. This is Walter Atkins Jr. saying, uh, a.